Okay, can you guys hear me? Yay, Sherry, you made it. Okay. Yes, thank you, I'm in. Well, welcome. Thank All right, you. Robert, are you ready? Yeah, you're recording. Okay. All right, so let's get this meeting started. Um, first item on the agenda is Run Among the Lakes. Uh, Doug, thank you so much for taking care of all those um, late race pack pickups. You bet. How's that coming? Is that one okay? Yeah, we have a lot, Nor. I mean, you've seen the emails. Uh, you know, I'm happy to make people happy. So maybe they'll continue to frequent the run. So a lot of people have been real complimentary. So, so I was thinking maybe um, I should send one final email to the runners um, like maybe tomorrow saying that, you know, the last day to pick up for late, late race pack pickup would be uh, the 15th or the 16th, I guess. Yeah, my neighbors think I'm running some illicit operation here down 10th <laughs> Avenue, I think, at this point. <laughs> uh, no, real quick, not to interrupt. Um, yeah. We skipped over uh, public comment and watch people that have signed up and we have uh, three, they can either comment at the beginning or they can defer to whenever a subject matter is on. And then uh, you skipped over the uh, Windermere Pet Fest. Uh, you're, you're right. I, I apologize. The Pet Fest I skipped over on, on purpose because there's not much going on with that. But the public comment, yep, I, I, I apologize. So let's go ahead and um, uh, we have three people signed up, you say? Yeah, the first one is Stephen Withers. I didn't know if you want to speak now or defer. Everybody has three minutes. Uh uh, Fernwood Park is my issue, so I'll defer. Okay. The next one up is uh, Jim Willard. Uh, likewise, I'll defer till the Fernwood Park matter comes up. Okay. And then we have George Folker, who is on the agenda later on. Uh, so I don't know if you wanted to um, move the agenda to get him out or to uh, just wait until we get to that subject matter. Either one fine with me. All right. So at the discretion of you, Nora, if you want to keep it just going down the line. Okay. Um, uh, all right. So back to Run Among the Lakes. Um, so I'll, I'll send another email out to everybody, Doug. We'll, we'll cut it on, on the 15th. Um, and then, then we, we'll pull those ones that need to be mailed. And we'll also have to um, <clears throat> up pick ups for the award winners. Okay. So the awards will be determined on the 16th. Okay. So are you, are you okay to manage that? I mean, there's not, there's not that many awards. Sir, if you just, you know, if you just feed me those and then I'll shoot them a note and try okay. to coordinate that. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we had a total of about 650 runners sign up. Um, we had, I think about maybe 30 refunds. Not, not really very many, uh, and only one sponsor dropped out. So, you know, I, I guess for a virtual event, it was, it's, it's, it is successful. I mean, people are running it because I see times being posted. Um, it's, you know, it's hard to feel like satisfied because you sort of feel like you, you know, we've done all this work, created this event, and then nobody actually sees anything. Um, but I guess it's the best we could do given the circumstances. Um, uh, we we set a tentative date for the for next year's uh, um, on April the tenth. But I don't know how you guys feel about it. I mean, who knows if we'll be able to have an event in April? Um, number one, and you know we currently have Pet Fest in March and Run Among the Lakes in April, and I just think it's really hard to do those two big events so close together. What would you guys think about pushing the Run Among the Lakes back to October again for next year? It, from, from the town standpoint, we would still need to coordinate with uh, Winnemere PD and off-duty. If everything's back to normal, Typically in the fall, off duty is hard to do because of all the uh, sports and other activities. Uh, springtime, there's not as many. Okay. 
So just be from a law enforcement perspective, uh, we'd have to coordinate with chief. Okay. Um, any committee members have any, any feelings on it? I think Doug may be handing out a uh, package at the door right now. <laughs> He's hanging them from the tree in his driveway. <laughs> Yeah, Nora, yeah. Uh, one thing on that, uh, I agree with Robert. Uh, during the uh, fall, uh, I know all the college football games and the, the different games and sports activities that are going on around here. PD is pretty well taxed, uh, mm -hmm. OT and, and all this. So uh, I think the spring is better. We just need to, to find a, a date that's doable. Uh, and uh, I know it puts a lot of work in there within a couple of months, but uh, I, I, I would go with the spring if it were up to me. Uh, all right, any other committee members have any comment? All right, well, it's, I, I mean, so we have, we have April the 10th booked with, with Diane. So we're booked with the town for that, um, for, for 2021. <laughs> And, you know, everybody can give it thought, I guess. We'll see what happens a little closer to the end of the year. Um, so, Doug, I know you're working on the Halloween thing. You want to give us a report on that? Uh, but let's see. Just that we have ordered the candy and the drawstring bags. Um, I've contacted Jim O'Brien, Nora. Uh, that's what we've done. I haven't done any race posting or um, route posting or any of that uh, at this point. Okay, so I'm waiting for the graphics from um, Kim Head. She volunteered to do them. So as soon as I get that in, I will send it over well, to everybody on the committee. You guys can take a look at it. We can, we can put that on the, on the website. Um, and we can put the race route on there as well, if you want to do that. Uh, I think Tracy is working um, with the Ways Committee. Yeah. To, yeah. yeah but, uh, Ray um, brought it up to the Ways on Tuesday, and she's starting a sign-up genius for um, a volunteer to sign up for the 28th at Town Hall. Perfect. Just to stuff the bag. Right. So that's on the 28th, uh, Tracy? Yeah, and I think we I think we said five o'clock. Um, hopefully that works. Okay. And Doug, the Windermere Police Department Foundation is going to be uh, throwing out um, glow sticks with the Windermere Police Department Foundation logo on it. We yeah. just ordered those today, huh. um, and they'll be delivered on October twenty sixth. Nice. <laughs> Um, Robert, I hadn't, uh, are, have we, anybody indicated, uh, what the vehicle will be that they ride in or what you did last time? It'll, it'll be a truck. Um, so whoever you want in the truck to, you know, either you have, like with the, the Easter event, we just had the Easter bunny and chief sit in, sit on the back of the truck. And then okay. the second truck actually was the one that passed out the candy. Um, and then it was followed by me and a photographer. So you had a lead car, the Easter Bunny, Candy, me, and then a photographer, and then a follow-up PD car. And then they had two roving cars that would stop traffic. Okay. Perfect. Um, Nora, one thing to, uh, we haven't hired a photographer. We had it in our notes last time. Okay, for Halloween, yeah. That's yeah, do we want to do that or not worry about it? I mean, I think it would be good to have pictures of it. Okay. Do you want to talk to somebody? Um, sure. Um, Robert, who did your Easter event? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it was just a resident, a volunteer. I'll have to talk to the chief, but I know Jennifer Roper um, has a photography business. I know Dan Higgins does it. Um, so if you want to keep it local, I know those two actually do photography. Okay. Well, Jennifer lives across the street from me, Doug. So if you want me to ask her, let me know. I'll do 
it up. Sure. Do, do she would charge us, right? Do we want to approve an amount or? Oh, I would ask her. I mean, I'll you know I'll ask her if she's interested in what she would charge, and we'll see what she says. And okay, and, it's just as far as committee approval. Right. Um, that's probably a good idea. So would we want to we want to do that now? Is somebody make a motion not to exceed or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Do we have a motion to spend up to one hundred and fifty dollars? on photography does that sound about right honestly don't know what the going rate is now i would say at least 200 and then i can um up it and then you can come back for retroactive authorization if it's a little bit more if okay. you're in a bind to find a photographer okay, okay. i make a motion to uh, spend up to two hundred dollars on a photographer for the Halloween parade. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, voting. Aye. 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 Okay, I think that's unanimous. Okay. Um, and, and so, more, you're you're just gonna get back with me and confirm that. Do you want me to ask John for sure? If you're, if, you know, it's up to you. Well, I'm happy to. Like I said, she lives across the street. I can just run over there and ask her. Okay. Um, and do we need a couple of volunteers to ride in the truck and hand out candy, Doug? Um, again, Robert, I'll defer to you on the logistics of what you did for Easter. We just had, um, I think, three people in the back of the truck. Um, so we had one on the either side and then somebody opening up boxes. You know, I'll be there with my daughter um, just riding around and then we'll probably have two people in our car throwing out the foundation stuff. Um, but all you need is pretty much two volunteers that might want to dress as uh, like in Halloween gear and just throw out candy. In, in the truck. Do we have any council members that might want to do that? Bob, that's got you all over it. <laughs> you don't have to wear a costume, Bob. I'm saying Billy's an option, you know, too. So he goes all out for Halloween. Unfortunately, I have a granddaughter's birthday party that day. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, Bob. That was quick. I won't shave. I will not shave my horns off for that day. Um, I mean, if you want council members, I'm happy to ask a few. It's fine with me, uh, Alicia. Okay, we just need two? Yeah, two. from what, 9.45 to noon? I'll, I'll, I'll work on it, Doug. Okay. Great. Um, okay, so actually, um, Frank, are you, should we um, move up Mr. Porter? Is he, he about the kayak storage? Yeah, let's do that. But first, can we go back to the run for just a second? Sure. I think we've expended the existing contract for the organizer. The um, yeah. so we're going to have to go out with an RQ or uh, some kind of solicitation for the new kid. So, if we're going to do that, and if we're going to have a run in April, that means probably we have a solicitation maybe in November, so it's December. Yeah, I just, I don't know if this is, I don't know if we should try to do that now or if we should wait for a while. I mean, I frankly am completely exhausted with the run among the lakes and nothing just dragged on forever. Um, well, but can we, I mean, we, can we do it without a, without a contractor? We can, yeah, I mean, we can, we could sign an extension with them for another year if we need to. Okay. I just, it, it's such a hard time for, for this sports event because okay. right now they can only be virtual. I don't know what the, I don't know what yeah, the landscape looks like with these companies anymore. Yeah, if it's an easy do with the existing company, I'd, I'd recommend we carry on with an extension. Mm -hmm. um, 
That works for me. Does anybody else have any, any comments? I agree, Nora. It's too much right now. Good. Thank God. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so, Frank, you want to tell us about the kayak storage, and then we'll, we'll do tennis and fernwood, because those are... Okay. Well, George, George Polker's on the line here, so um, take it away, George. Well, thanks. Um, and I appreciate you guys listening to my cockamamie ideas sometimes. Um, can I share a screen? I made a little PowerPoint thing. Okay. Yeah, I'll just uh, let me go ahead and enable the security. Go ahead. See if it works for me. Oops. You're sharing a screen, so I can't. Oh, yeah, you're right. There. <laughs> There we go. How's that? Is that on there? Nope. No. Nope. Huh? See you, but not the screen. Yeah, sometimes PowerPoints don't work, but if it's in a PDF format, it works. Uh, I didn't do it in a PDF format. Hey, gummit. You can save it into a PDF format right now if you have the uh, ability to. Let's see. Usually, if you just go under, if you go under print, It'll, it'll give you an option to save as a PDF. Oh, file save. a second then. Hold on a minute. If you do file save as PDF. I just want everybody to notice, I think Frank finally got his hair cut. You like it? <laughs> <laughs> I did it myself. Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. It was getting out there for a while. <laughs> Six months. Let's see. You guys can talk about something else while I'm fiddling around with this. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on to the tennis. Let's know when I'm ready. <laughs> All right, Doug, you want to talk about tennis then? Um, you know, the only thing I have, Nora, is the letter we got from a resident. Um, I think, unless you have anything else. Um, you know, according to a resident that regularly uses, uses the courts, we're still having pro problems. Uh, this time it's someone over at um, uh, Main Street Courts. Um, you know, Robert, I asked, I asked uh, Nate, you may know him, to, go, to take a picture or to call me for me to take a picture and, and try to identify him. Um, you, you know, we can potentially call them in as you did two other pros a couple of months ago to make sure they understand the rules. Um, and, and I guess, I guess they're overtly teaching and they told the resident that they have reserved two courts of the three every afternoon and it's been town approved. So somehow, you know, somehow it's just, it's just never ending. It seems like, yeah. um, but I'll do my best to try to identify the person. Marcelo normally knows the pros and can get like he did the two others to get emails or phone numbers to try to peacefully, um, you know, let, let the person know. Um, otherwise, I, ha I haven't noticed problems. Um, Tracy, I know you're over there quite a bit and Sherry, you are too, but when I drive by, there seems to be availability, but I don't necessarily drive over there in the mornings. There any comments? I haven't. I haven't seen a problem, so I was kind of surprised when you got the uh, a complaint. But um, you know, he's obviously seeing something we're not seeing. Yeah, he says so. But I, I, mean, I, I definitely take note of it every time I go by. So the only thing I know to do, Nor, is to try to identify the specific issue and try to peacefully let that person know that they're, if they're not over there with the resident, they shouldn't be on our courts. And especially, t apparently, uh, taking up two courts er every afternoon. So. Do we get any complaints about the tennis courts other than about tennis pros using the courts? Um, I think only maybe the condition of the courts at Main Street is deteriorating, Nora, mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, that's in, in lights, maybe. Those are the only one in the past, the ones that we've received, to my knowledge. 
Other than that, all the aggravations at the tennis courts are caused by the tennis pros camping out on the courts, right? I think it's most. I think it's most of it. The aggravation from residents, yeah. Who does have permission to coach there? Just Marcelo, and he's got pros under him as well, right? Um, the only time Sherry would be in the afternoons, uh, five thirty to seven. We for, we uh, agree to a, a kids clinic where we have our kids in town participating as well. And then so we have the. Um, that is. Tell me what pro that is, so then I just know, because I'm over there at that hour, and I know there's somebody coaching, but I can't tell if it's Marcelo's, uh, you know, his pros, because I, it's not him, but he has his yeah. pros. Right. Do you do you know Damon? Is uh, it's over there quite a bit. Okay. Do you know Damon? No, I don't. Okay. So that's. I mean, I know somebody's coaching there, but I don't know who they are. Or more than likely, if they're on two of the three in, in, at 530, that would be uh, – and they, I think he's got them in red shirts now, Sherry. Are they oh, wearing okay. – uh, he did tell me that he was having them in regular uniform. Oh, okay. All right, I can be more, you know, observant then. I just didn't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, gotcha. But, you know, Nora, other than that, you know, Nate specifically, our resident specifically said he wouldn't be for, you know, adding software – um, we could probably add some sign, you know, signage. I, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what else to do. I don't know that signage is going to stop these pros who are partially earning a living and bumping our residents, you know, that signage is going to stop it in and of itself. But, you know, that's an option to you, I suppose. Right. I'm just, I mean, I, <clears throat> I know that, you know, there are, there are a few residents who, you know, hire personal tennis coaches. To give them lessons and you know that's perfectly fine as long as the resident is there with them but i mean these pros would be causing us an enormous amount of aggregation i don't see that we get any benefit from these people so i'm just sort of wondering like how long we you know we, we constantly try to fend these guys off and and just Say the pros can't use our tennis courts. Yeah, I mean, I think most come and go, Nora. You know, they may teach an hour here and there, but, you know, they come and teach, you know, a resident's child and they leave. It's, you know, this particular gentleman apparently is staying over there and taking multiple courts, I think, in multiple hours. Um, and I think that is what really causes the rub, you know? Yeah, for sure. But, you know, unfortunately, we, we, you know, we don't have the, the staff to, to monitor the tennis courts. Correct. Um, so I'll just, you know, try to identify and, you know, try to solve the problem. And, and Robert, if we can work together, maybe to, I'll, through sources, try to identify the pro and try to stop this or get him in to visit with you. That's fine. I mean, the ultimate punishment would be for a trespass. Yeah, I mean, my perception is the other two that you met with, had, unless one of those two have, but the other pro I know has gone over to the other courts that we seem to have solved that problem with the meeting with you. Yeah. This seems to be, to my knowledge, is another pro. Okay. Yeah, just let me know, and then I'll talk to them. Okay. All right. Um, you want to see anything else on tennis? That's all I have, Nor, unless anybody else has, has anything. I think, I think I'm up now. I mean, I think I'm ready whenever you're ready for me. All righty, let's go then. Hmm. There we go. Is that it? You see it? Yep. Hey. I see it. All right. So, um, you know, I, over the years I've lived here, in Windermere among the lakes, you can see how many lakes are around the town. I've noticed a, a general um, lack of access, it's kind of growing a little bit with um, for the residents to get into the water. And I think it's a great thing to be in the water. And um, so for whatever the reasons are, I put some down, but they're not really that important. But I was trying to think of ways to improve access to all these, all these lakes. And I happened to be in North Carolina probably two years ago, 
and I saw this, a, uh, a body of water that I was near. I was in uh, Beaufort, North Carolina, so it was actually the Intercoastal Waterway. And I thought, well, wouldn't that be a great thing to have in Windermere? And then people could, you know, rent that and rent a space for a year or six months, however you want to do it. Um, uh, you know, if we put one or two at, at some of our waterfront parks, um, it, it would provide access. You know, the last couple months, <laughs> There's been a plethora of people launching kayaks, mostly some canoes, um, into the lake, just because they want to get out and do something, and they don't, they're tired of sitting at home. So um, the idea popped in my head that boy, it'd be great if we could do something like this in Windermere. And um, so I took this picture, and I took one, a kind of an up close one to see, show you how it's built. And these are six by six posts, I think. These long ones are four by six. And then it's got these metal bars to, um, to separate the spaces. And you can see each kayak is locked in of its own device by some kind of chain or bicycle lock or something. Um, I know some kayaks don't have any holes or handles or anything, so they're kind of hard to lock. I don't know how that would work. But um, so that's the idea. I looked into um, how much it would cost to build one and just got a real rough estimate. And with all the pressure treated, and this is quality pressure treated, this is not Lowe's um, stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got it from, down at the bottom of that slide, you see outdoor living products, that's where I got the estimate. They make quality either marine grade or, gr or ground contact grade uh, pressure treated and it, it, it's more expensive than I thought really but about 1500 bucks for and it's they store um, 15 kayaks or canoes so, um, so then I was thinking how could we manage this and my proposal would be and it's just me thinking out it, to myself really you guys can do it not do it whatever well, first of all, let's talk about the things to consider. I would, if I was doing it by myself and had permission to do everything I wanted to do, of course, it'd be residents only. I'd charge a fee for annual use, whatever, 100 bucks, 150 bucks, $50, I don't know, whatever, whatever seems reasonable. Um, I would have the Parks and Rec, you guys, the Parks and Rec Committee, take this over, collect the fee, and use that money for some of your projects that you're that you're doing. Um, it's not going to be a great windfall, but it would be something. Um, and then annually, you would send out a reminder notice that the the rental is due on the you know thirty days prior. And then you have to be brutal about non renewal because otherwise it's going to get to be a mess. So thirty days after renewal goes out, if they don't have it paid up, go out there with bolt cutters and cut their lock and auction off the kayak. And then, of course, parking is always going to be an issue. I don't know how to handle that. You got to, um, I mean, I would recommend most people, well, I don't know if most people could walk or not. I don't know. You know, you've got people in the manors and, and all other places that don't have any water access. Um, and if they could rent one of these spaces and have a kayak close to the water, what would they do? We have a couple of public uh, parking spots around town and we and the church is available during the week with nobody, no cars in it. So maybe walk in, I don't know how to exactly do that, but somehow you got to make it clear that you can't park by where these boat, these boat works would be. Um, and that's pretty much all. That's a, a, a general idea. This could be, um, it's not very difficult to build. The hardest part is getting the posts deep enough set in. I don't know if you want to set them in concrete or not, really. Concrete causes any kind of thing that is set in to uh, decompose faster. But um, I mean, 
I would certainly help make them. I would try to talk to Rotary Club into, as a service project, helping to make them if you guys wanted to do that. Public Works could do it. I mean, it's just a couple of holes and a couple of bolts and it's together. So it's really not difficult. Um, or if you want to get an engineering drawing and do it all, all upright, then that's great. Um, so that's my idea. That's that's. Uh, I'll I'll shut up and you guys can talk, ask me questions, or tell me to go home, which I'm already home. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I I like the i the idea, and personally, I would love to be able to rent one of those slots, and you know, berth a kayak at Fernwood or. Or, um, so that I, you know, didn't have to keep it in the garage and haul it around. But I guess my concern is if there's only 15 slots available in one of those, um, how would we manage rentals? I mean, we, we'd have to have a lottery system in town, I think. To, I, I mean, it seems yeah. to me the demand would be super high. But well, it might be. And maybe, you know, I think we, if I count correctly, well, off the top of my head, anyway, I can think of four kind of waterfront places you could put it. Fernwood, Palmer Park, um, the one on Lake, whatever, you know, near the, the one that runs along the waterfront over there on Lake Down, whatever that is, whatever it's called. Yeah, I don't think we have any space on Lake Down for it, something like that. Um, okay, well, that's, I, you know better than I do. All right. I walk that every once in a while, but I don't, right, don't pay but, that much attention, obviously. So I think, but anyway, and you could build um, more than one in, in Fernwood, possibly. So, yeah, and I don't, how to manage that at first come, first serve, or I don't know. I think we could, we could build one, see how it goes. If it's a big hit, we build another one. Yeah. Well, they take up a lot of space, so. It does. There's, there's six. I thought I had the dimensions on here. I guess I don't. They're 15 feet long, right. about seven feet tall to the top of the post. That, these are, I didn't have a tape measure when I was there. I just guessed. But I did step this off, and my steps are fairly accurate. So it's 15 feet long and six feet deep, and um, about seven feet tall. So they're, they're big, but they're not humongous. There's a lot of space at Fernwood, and I think there's space over on Lake Down, 4th Avenue, between the parking and the lake. The Butler Rec Center would be a good spot. There's plenty yeah. of green space there. Yeah, with that lake there. there. That's an that's a excellent idea, too, yeah. Um, Nora, it's just my opinion. If you get in closer to residential areas, we probably need, this is my opinion, need something that looks less rustic. That's just my I, personal opinion. I would agree. I, th I think Lake Dallas would probably not be a great location for it, but you know, Fernwood and Windermere Rec potentially, I, I could see. Um, but I, I don't well, know. We could figure out figure out some way to make it prettier. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we could. I'm no designer. I build, but I don't design too well. <laughs> so. Leisha, what do you think? Well, I love that the residents in this town can get on the lakes easier because, I mean, we're clo you know we're close enough to the lake to drag ours down, but man, some of them can be heavy and hard, and if you don't have a truck, they're difficult. Right. Um, my worry at Fernwood is, and unfortunately, Fernwood's not just a community, a town park. It gets a lot of other use right now, um, which is always a problem. So I don't know. I'm just thinking, are they safe? Are they good? There's just a lot of hoopla. And I didn't know about Windermere Rec is perfect. Because I, I do always worry about the kayaks going out on Butler on the weekends. They make me very nervous with how the boats go through, um, especially between Bird Island. But Windermere Rec is good if we think they would be safe. That might be a good trial. Because mm -hmm. there's so much room, they won't, it won't be over intrusive. Um, I mean, so I guess- as, just, this, is a, this is a way of, comparing this thing that I took pictures of was a public boat ramp um, in a little corner of the, uh, not really a park, but uh, an area they had with a picnic table, and a picnic table kind of across the street from this, and beside the public ramp that ran, you know, I don't know how many boats a day up and down it. And these all seem to be safe. 
Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think if we wanted to try it, Windermere Rec would be ideal because there's so much property out there. We actually, you know, have a place for the kayaks to go, you know, launch in. They launch in easily from several spots down there as well. Um, I don't know how to manage the lottery. I don't know how you manage the fees and keeping up. I know we don't, as a business, don't have time. Um, I mean, as a business, as, as a committee, doesn't don't really have time to keep it up. I know, CT's not on the butler. Everybody's, I hear you, CT. Yeah, yeah. Not on the chain, but fit there well yeah i mean these are things that, you know i just threw out that um probably a collective discussion is is more intelligent than an individual trying to come up with an idea yeah yeah that's would, would, uh robert with the liability is that just simply in the in the sign off that they acknowledge that they leave their craft out that there's damage is their responsibility or how yeah, they would have to indemnify the town for anything that happens to their watercraft while it's on our property. So they'd have to sign an indemnification clause, meaning that they won't come after us if there's a theft or damage or anything else. Okay. And and you also probably, I mean, I I'm surprised that this kayak is up here at the top of yeah. this thing. Getting a kayak down off of that is for anybody over 20 is probably a little bit dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you might want to have something in there about, you know, if you get hurt taking your own kayak off the rack, that's your problem. Yeah, and just a reminder too, I think about six years ago, Oars tried to um, do the same thing over at Windermere Recreation Center when they were um, out of space over at their facility. Um, but again, that was commercial versus, re you know, residential. So. Uh, it was not um, based on the fact that they were commercial. So I just want to bring that up that, you know, you have ha you have had the same type of request in the past, but those boats are enormous compared to what these things are. Yeah, and they wanted an enclosed, like, physical space so nobody could steal the boats, which would have, right, it was like 20 feet long. I mean, the, the, their, you know, their, their boat sheds are huge. Uh, and, and there was also traffic issues on that precedent as well, as far as pickup times and what we were concerned about. Well, they also needed a motorized boat to go out with the rowers, which you can't have on that lake. So I was kind of into that. The more I see it, the more I like it. I mean, I, I see people going by my house, dragging <laughs> kayaks and canoes, and I, I think it would get used. I, I totally, I think it would get, I mean, to me, that's my only concern is that people would be fighting over, you know, who gets the, uh, who gets to rent it, but. Um. Yeah. I mean, we counted um, 20 kayaks being launched right down the street from us one, set, I think it was a Sunday, one Sunday a couple months ago during the, the, the height of the COVID thing. That's a lot of people, and they all drove down, dumped their kayak off, and took their car somewhere and parked it. All right. And back. Where was that, George? I'm at. Uh, it's uh, that was at the corner. That was off of uh, Palm Palmer Park, oh, okay. on Pine Street, where all the yeah. boathouses and the uh, Rotary Park is. Sure. We launched right there. Sure. All right. Well, how do you guys want to proceed, Frank? Do you want to? Do some more research. I'm not sure what I would research. I mean, I think I think George has laid out pretty much what it would look like and what it would cost. Well, I guess I, we. Well, I think there's a question of location in my mind. Yeah. Right. I'm thinking we need to look at the parks, figure out like if we if we say Windermere Rec Center would be the, maybe the first park that probably the has the most space. Um, it has the, you know, it already has a, um, a kayak launch. I mean, it, you could put it right by the parking lot, which would be easy. You know, maybe that, maybe that's a, a, a beta test spot to see how it goes. Um, yeah, I haven't been over to that park in a long time. Is it, is it still have a, a seawall when you go past the, the um, tennis courts? Does it still have a seawall down that way? Yeah, you would have to locate the the racks probably on the island itself, probably next to the pavilion. Um, so you're not dragging it over the bridge through the island to actually launch it. 
Yeah. Um, you can launch it in the canal, but I mean, you can't get under the bridge in that canal. You have to go to the east and good luck navigating those waterways. Yeah, I would say that as close as you can get this thing to the water, oh. the better off you are probably. Yep. Um, you also got to think about, like you said, nor the fees and um, the lottery or who gets it, how it's advertised. There's a some process that have to go into that. Who's going to manage it? You might have fun with the lottery, have people put their name in a hat and have a, a big drawing. I don't, know, I don't know how that would go over on Zoom, but you know, <laughs> it might be kind of fun. I don't know. You might make a lot of people angry or you might mm -hmm. make a lot of people happy. As a parent of some of a child that's in VPK, if you do first come first serve, and then this is something that's a really hot ticket, you will have people camping over just to get a slot for a year. I can guarantee you. Uh, yeah. Well, just somehow they pay their, you know, either get in the lottery and you draw numbers, they get numbers. And then you just go down the line to pay for your first year for 15 spots. To keep so, it simple. I guess we could draw up a plan and uh, location, you know, just kind of dream up what we think would be a reasonable thing to charge, where to put it, who would build it. Um, I'd, George, I'd be happy to work with you and come up with a plan that we could review next time we meet. Yeah. Sure. Um, Nora, you do have a member of the public that has raised their hand for public comment when you're ready. McKinley? Yeah, this, this is Jim Willard speaking. Good evening. Um, before we get too far down the road on the kayak and canoe storage facility, uh, let's, let's talk again about exactly who we're attempting to benefit from this. Uh, I heard you talk about town residents, and you know, for the 37 years I've been at Fernwood, I've seen you know hundreds of kayaks and canoes get launched, and they come into the park like all the other boats do, uh, typically on a trailer or on the on the top of a vehicle or in the back of a pickup, and they get launched, and then they return, and so we're providing storage at the park instead of residents who enjoy kayaks and canoes storing them at their own house. So that's the, you know, I mean, I, I see the benefit for a, a, a very frequent user of kayaks so they can leave it in one place and not have to store it themselves. But you know, are we doing this to collect money? Is it is a income producing item? Uh, it, it you know there's, I, you know I have a hard time numbering all the the issues I see. Uh, not the least of which is security and theft, no matter what, because they're going to be sitting there all the time. Um, I don't think it's terribly attractive, frankly. <clears throat> but are we fixing a problem that? that we didn't have, <clears throat> what's broken about the current system? I mean, do we have a lot of residents complaining that they are tired of taking their kayak down to the lakes and launching it themselves? All right, well, thanks for your comment, Jim. Um, you know, we're, 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 not, we're not just a reactive committee. We, we try to come up with ideas that will make the parks better for the residents. Um, and, and this is certainly something that could benefit some residents. Um, so, okay, I, 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 I'm not against ideas, believe me. And 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 this one right. has, so, has merit for the people that would utilize it, I guess. But I, I, I would like to take a little time and uh, be able to consider uh, other considerations and consequences, and not just the convenience to the to the you know select few that would utilize it uh, frequently. They're, they're well, that's yep. Yeah, that's why Frank and George are going to okay go back um, and come up with a, a more Nora, flexible plan, and we'll take another look. Yeah. Nora, does this take a council vote for approval, McKinley? Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. So Frank, you guys will come up, flesh this out, 
put some more meat on the bones and um, come back next month with a with another more detailed plan and we'll take another look at it. Yep. Okay. Hey, Nora, I think it'd be a good idea if everybody on the committee took a look at this over the next month and figured out a good place for it to be, what it should look like, uh, and you know, just just kind of chew on it for the next month, and then the next meeting we sit down and and look at it. But I, I would agree. I mean, it's, it's, it's look at the possible locations, and I and you know the the Butler chain is the primary place that people want to go. So you know, at uh, Palmer or uh, Fernwood Park, uh, I think it would get more usage, even though some of the kayakers. Uh, <clears throat> I know that one of the council members likes to go to uh, Lake Bessie. So, you know, you got Lake Bessie and then uh, you've got uh, Windermere Rec Center. So just kind of evaluate all those and uh, put it on the agenda for next month. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a, lot, there's a lot to chew on. I mean, it's, it's a big thing. It's, like you said, it's not, not terribly attractive and there are some liability issues. You know, even if people sign off on a waiver, I'm sure if somebody comes and finds their, their boat gone, um, they're, they're going to come back at the town. So, you know, there's a, a lot to consider about it. But it, it, as I said, personally, I would love to be able to keep a kayak right at the lake. So I'm sure, I, I think if we move forward with this, it would be extremely popular. That's who it would benefit, nor people like you that don't have a truck and can't move it, or you know, exactly. or it's just too yeah. hard. Yeah. Hey, George, George, did, yes. you get any, did you get any feel for how successful it was? I mean, it looks, it looks like it's used. Where uh, you can see, I think there were when I took this, I saw a couple people launching and taking out. So two or three of these are missing. So there's what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here, and three say three are missing. It's ten out of 15 spots were taken. So I, that's reasonably successful. And what yeah. kind of an area was it in? Was it? It was in the town of Beaufort, North Carolina. At the, it's at the, uh, I guess the northern end of the town where the public boat ramp is. Um, it, this thing was just sitting there right beside the road. It's, all, it's basically on a corner next to a, a marina and restaurant and boat work. Uh, shop and like I said across the street towards the water um, was a little area that had a picnic table and right beside that was a huge like they could launch three boats at a time boat ramp so it's a fairly busy corner I noticed that none of these kayaks are $2,000 kayaks they're the $300 variety and yeah. what if I was going to put one in one of these, that's what I would put there. I would not put a great kayak in this just for the concerns you guys have. It will get, first of all, I'll get beat up by the sun. Second, I'll get beat up by people, possibly, and or stolen, possibly. Well, I don't think that's, I, I hope that's not a problem. I have more faith in humanity than I guess I ought to, but um, I, my gut feeling is that they'll be safe. Hey, your description was is appreciated because you described a large uh, public facility adjacent to a marina, a boat ramp, and, and a number of commercial enterprises. Right. Uh, I don't know how large the park was in terms of acreage. It's not really a park. Right, right there, you can see through the boathouse, there's a condominium or a house or something is right there. That's residence. It's clearly a public area. Um, if it's, well, it, that's even more interesting. If it's private, you know, you don't, do you know who, you, who is actually parking their kayaks there? <clears throat> Are they people that live in the adjacent condos someplace or was it really open to the public? Um, well, this was on right. the public park part of this, but, but I'm saying right, there's a road right there. And just on the other side of that road, you can see the windows and the siding of a, of a private residence. Okay, well, let's let's move on. It's already 10 minutes to six. Yeah, yeah thank you. So, yeah, I thank appreciate you. It. Okay. I will thank stop sharing and I'll work with Frank, whatever he needs. That's great. Thanks so much for doing that. And we look forward to uh, seeing um, uh, another version of it next month. Sure.
Um, all right, so let's move on to Fernwood. Um, so we have several people who want to speak. Do you want to speak now? Uh, I would like to defer until after the uh, committee's discussion, please. And Nora, I've got I've got a list that I'd like to share, uh, whatever whatever makes sense in this process. Okay, go for it. This is okay. this is Stephen Withers. I'd like to follow uh, Frank and uh, Jim whenever they go. So Robert, can I get him uh, permission to screen share? Yes, sir. Just one second. Should be free to go. Okay, can you see it? No. No. <laughs> no, we see you, but nothing else. There we go. Okay. Okay, I've got a list here, half a dozen or so things. They're more or less in what I think would be my priority of what I would like to see happen at that Fernwood. So you can look at the whole list here, I think. Um, I'm remembering, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm remembering there used to be a berm yes. along the shoreline. Yes. And some years ago it went away. Don't know yes. why or who did it. I'd like to see the berm come back for a couple of reasons. I think it would help the runoff situation. Uh, and I think it would give us a, you know, a nice uh, foundation to put a sitting area, kind of like Jim Willard had envisioned. So I'd like to see the berm come back and I'd like to see the entrance to the ramp and the dock be modified <clears throat> to provide a little bit of a dam for stormwater so we would discourage stormwater from going into the lake all the way along Fernwood Park. So and I you know I'd like to see that integrated within whatever turns out to be the stormwater control for the park 7th Avenue and Butler Street all of which I'm pretty paranoid about. Okay then parking you know, the parking along uh, the Willard's house is well done, well marked. It works. Leave it alone. On the other side, I think we need something that marks off where to park in some kind of permanent fashion. And I would recommend doing it with railroad ties and gravel. <clears throat> and I wouldn't use the gravel that quickly turns to dirt. I would use granite. Right. That's, I think, what we, we've been talking about. Yeah. Okay. And then I like what Jim Willard put together for a sitting area. I would like it to be on the berm, which give, give it a little bit of a elevation. And I would like to separate it from the dock by about 30 feet. I walked it off. <clears throat> so move it to the west. Uh, keep it as close to the wetlands, as close to the lake as it can be. And I think it, it could give a good view. I think it's mostly clear in that area. And, and it would provide some shade during the day. It'd be a very pleasant place to sit. So uh, Public Works has done a pretty good job of clearing at least part of the wetlands, the lakefront. Um, I think they need to finish it, uh, install some some native plants <clears throat> that don't grow tall and obscure the view. And then, you know, finish the job cleaning out the mess because there's still a lot of it. And that, and that lakefront's a pretty labor intensive thing. Um, so I don't know if the town has the wherewithal and the budget to do a good job of maintaining that area because I, I know it's a lot of work. But, you know, I'd kind of like to see an estimate of what, what it would cost to do that. 
And then I like, um, this, I think this was Stephen Withers' idea to extend the existing dock 20 feet to the west, uh, basically double the size, <clears throat> double the area for boat tie-ups. Uh, there, are, there are backlogs there now and then, and it would give twice as much space for people to sit, maybe at a bench or two. And then moving on, further west of where I would put the uh, sitting platform, not calling it a deck, but a platform, I would clear and maintain an open area where for occasions like the boat parade, if 100 people wanted to gather, there'd be room. It wouldn't cost much. Um, so I think that would be a, a way to do some of what we had planned for the, you know, for the big, you know, huge dock that we had had laid out in the in the uh, concept. We don't and have lastly, a um, other towns, Orange County, other counties have put together uh, adopt a park programs. They seem to work. Uh, here are a couple of links to one for Orange County and one for city of New Smyrna Beach. Um, you know, their websites say they're successful in expanding the use, you know, of the parks and the um, uh, co you know, the consciousness and, and get some free work out of people that are willing to participate in that. So, um, so those are my ideas and I'm open for discussion, tell me I'm crazy, whatever. <laughs> um, right. Alicia? Yeah, Frank, those are, those, that looks great. Thank you for all the time put into that. Um, I think you're trying to find a nice compromise for the residents and, you know, and for the town, everyone that, that uses that. Um, I mean, to say the least, um, it's been a very rough year on Butler Street. Um, and it continues to be with, you know, what's still ahead of us. Um, I think it's been pretty exhausting. Um, COVID, you know, just really jammed up the park. We had a lot of issues. Um, we had, you know, just, it's just added a lot of stress down here. Um, the Bird Island issue, um, the traffic, um, the non-resident use, the fights, it's just, just been a really stressful time. What, what I would love to see us do is take a step back and let's see if we can get Bird Island under control, see if what they're saying is going to work. Um, let's see if the key change is going to help a little. Let's see if the um, alcohol checks, you know, all this starts deterring so it comes back to a town park because it has so many people down here on the hot, hot weekends, you know, on the weekends that are hot spots coming and going and speeding down the road and causing problems. It would just be, it's a great park, but this year it's just been a rough time. If we can sit on this for the year and let's see if some of those take effect, I think we'll have a more clear vision on how we can add amenities to this park without overloading it and overwhelming it and adding more issues to it. So that would be, I love all those ideas, but that would be my recommendation that we just kind of sit for a little bit and let's see if we can get the park back in control. And if some of these other things that are out there help us bring it more back to a community park. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, this is Jim Willard. Uh, Jim, let us finish the committee first, and then and then we'll we'll ask for other speakers. Um, Tracy, did you have something? Yeah, I mean, I think what Lisha says makes a lot of sense. Um, I feel like it's kind of very discombobulated right now because we, first of all, we can't meet. It's hard for us to really get a idea of all these. I mean, I appreciate everybody doing the work, the residents, Frank, everybody trying to. I don't, I don't really think the idea of that smaller um, proposal 
makes sense because I mean, we could just put picnic tables out there if we wanted to. I mean, and and the the permitting's still the same. So whether we do our original plan or we do the small scale down plan, um, we're still going to be putting out a lot of money. So I kind of agree with Alicia that maybe we just take a pause and just see because, um, you know, we're just doing this as volunteers and it's, it's kind of become a headache. And nobody wants to to upset people. We want it to be for everybody to enjoy. Um, I do think that our goal as Parks and Rec is to develop the park and make it enjoyable for everyone. I don't want to not do the park, but right now with all these different ideas coming at us, it's kind of hard to make a decision, you know, right off the bat. I don't even know what emotion would be. Um, I did have a question that came up. Does one of the residents have an actual boat dock on the park grounds, Robert? I'm here. What was the question? Does one of the adjacent residents have their boat dock on the park grounds? Nothing I'm aware of, no. There, there's entrances okay. to the, there's, I, I believe the Willards have an entrance to the park from their property and the uh, neighbor to the west or north has a entrance to the park from their property. Okay, well, I just heard that um, something came out in permitting and there was one of the docks, uh, residence docks was on the Fernwood Park ground. So I wanted to clarify that. Um, I, was I, I think we that. need to, okay, well, we can look into that, but, um, I don't think we should not develop the park. I just, um, I like the plan. This plan was developed before I got on the committee, but I like it. I think the residents would love it. So um, I'm just open for, dis I've got an open mind. I'm just open for discussion. I, I don't like the, the scale down. I just don't think it's worth it. The scale down plan, I'm sorry. I appreciate the work, but I just don't think it's worth it. If we're going to do it, let's do it. All right. Thanks, Tracy. Sherry, do you have any comments? Sherry, are you there? Maybe we lost her. Doug, how about you? Uh, I had a question on the uh, on on Jim Willard's proposal. The downsizing of that the uh, that to what we exist uh, originally proposed, nor do you have a handle on that? Well, as best I could tell, um, Jim Willard's boardwalk was about 25 feet long. It was okay. hard to make it out, but I, I think it's about 25 feet. Okay. Um, I, I went and looked at it and measured it out. Um, so, you know, my feeling is that, is that we need the boardwalk to be over by the lagoon because that's where the view is. Um, you know, Jim Willard's proposal has the boardwalk, it's basically behind a lot of cypress trees. And I think, you know, the, it, it needs to be over, I guess it's west. I'm, I never know my east from my west, but I guess it's, it's on the west side by the lagoon, um, you know, we, we put, we, we put as much seating on there as we could. And, you know, if the residents feel it's, it's too big, you know, we could certainly look at it and possibly downsize it a bit. Um, but, you know, we've, I mean, we did spend several years looking at a lot of options for this park and and I think that's the, the best one, but, you know, I'm happy to go back and, uh, and you know, make that a bit smaller if we need to. But I, I still think Fernwood is, it was designated 100 years ago as a park. It's been sadly neglected for 30 years that I know of and maybe longer than I know of. Um, and, you know, I just, I feel as, the Park and Recreation Committee, our responsibility is to make the parks useful and accessible 
to the residents of the town of Windermere, and I, I think that's what we should do. Um, you know, Frank's idea of making the existing dock bigger, it, you know, is, I, I don't know if, I mean, that, that you know, the, the Bird Island issue is people come to Fernwood Park to go to Bird Island. They, people are coming to Fernwood Park to go to Fernwood Park. They just want to get off to Bird Island. So I, I'm not sure making the actual dock bigger would be a great thing. And it's it would be way outside of our budget. I mean, um, making that dock larger would be a, a pretty expensive proposition, um, which would not fit into the, the budget that we have at this point. Um, but it, you know, maybe something to look at in the future. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's mm -hmm. my my opinion on it. And I don't know, Doug, what what were you going to so, say? So again, back to my question. So the original yeah. dock, um, and I don't have the notes when we had this two or three, what, two or three years ago. What, what is, do we have an approximate length? Do you know? Uh, Scott, do you have that somewhere? I mean, I'm sure it's on there, but um, I, um, I'm looking at this on my iPad and I, I can't. Okay. I'm sorry, what was the question, Doug? The length of the original in the, in the plan, the original plan. It, well, not the it, original plan, you mean this plan, the one that's right. on yeah, that was that the original plan, but yeah, that we're looking at the, the total the, the new proposal. This one that's on the screen right now, yeah. Right. Um, I, I'll have to. I would have to get back to you on that. I can look it up real quick, but I, okay. I don't want to quote something I don't know right off the top of my head. Okay. Sorry, I should have sent that in advance just to the question to come up. I can probably look it up real quick. So if you give me a minute. Okay. Um. Hey, I just want to be clear, Nora, I agree with everything that you said. Um, it's just that I, it's hard for me to make a decision on any kind of changes when we already have the plan in place and it's really hard to kind of make a knee jerk reaction decision on scaling down the park without really looking at everything. And I mean, these are a lot of big decisions. I totally, I mean, I, I think, you know, if, if we, I think we should, um, you know, probably go back and take another look at it and, and decide what we want to do. I, you know, this is not, this is not something that's going to happen overnight. So, you know, the whole Bird Island thing, you're probably talking years before that comes to some legal conclusion. And I don't want to let the park sit there for years um but you know just i mean the, the permitting and the building you know this is not something that's going to be done this year it's, right you know, it's, it's a fairly long process and we can you know we can stop the process i suppose if we if we decide to but you know i don't my, think we should not i don't think we should not um uh, I do not think we should stop trying to improve the park. The park, like you said, has been ne neglected. It is a gem that has not even been realized by the town. And everybody deserves a chance to use that park. It's probably right. one of the best views in town. Exactly, it's, it's beautiful. And C.T. Allen is right, Bird Island is, Bird Island is not part of the park. You know, there's a problem at Bird Island, but it is, it is not the park's problem and you know, we, we, we can't fix that. Yeah, real quick before we get into this, um, you know, I'd have to ask everybody not to use the chat during a discussion point because that is technically public comment. Uh, if you wish to speak on the matter, just go ahead and state your name, address, and we'll add you to the list uh, of the others that have signed up to speak on this matter as well. You're kind of getting around the actual public comment by adding uh, comments to the chat. Uh you know, Nora, I know the Bird Islands, it, you know, not, we have no control absolutely over that, but it has made such an impact on how that park is used. It's taken it from what was a residential park most of the 22 years we've lived here, and especially last year. And I know it's part COVID. I know it's, you know, Bird Island party scene. It's hard to see through the forest right now. 
because it's caused so many issues with us. You know, we do people, like, I think people are getting like picking up at our dock and being paid and I'm seeing tours go off of it and people parking everywhere. I just, it's hard to see exactly how we should handle it and what's best for the residents in the park when there's so much going on there, we can't quite see through the forest. But do you think, do you think that activity has anything to do with the park? I mean, the people that come to the park to go to Bird Island. No, I don't think the people going to Bird Island care a bit about a boardwalk or a bench, or I don't think they care about that. But yeah, that's right, right. That's yeah, what I, I agree. agree. I don't think it's, that's not gonna make any difference to the right. Bird Island issue. But it's just hard to know. Exactly. It's hard to find the moderation agree with that. right now for it. I mean, personally, I mean, I, I, you know, we walk down there several times a day. I would love to sit and have a place to sit and watch the sunset and, yep. you know, and, and I, I would love to. I'm just not sure what scale that should be because there's just so many other things going on right now that you know, we're told it's going to improve. So, I mean, I had, I had a way I wanted to improve it. I wanted to move the gate up and fix it right away, but you know, apparently that's not gonna happen. So now we have the slow route is to see what, see what's gonna happen, see if we can get it, get it back. I don't, I don't know what else to do. I don't have the answer. I just know I'd rather pause and be sure than jump forward and do something that we're not sure maybe how it impacts. Nora, uh -huh. um, I can, uh, you know, in, in consideration to possibly have a working session together in consideration of what's been proposed by Jim, um, you know, this sounds like it's a little like herding cats and just within the committee and to try to in, in consideration of the sizing. I know I took a tape measure in my house and measured out 25 feet and tried to picture myself. I've been over there plenty of times. You know, what's that gonna look like in the expanse of the park to try to, you know, forge some type of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if it's a solution, but a, a proposal uh, to have a working session together and you know, in the park, and measure this off, and kind of look at you know what we have versus what's been proposed, and and that that's just my opinion. So you would like for the committee to set up a a, a working session to go to the park and walk the park again? Yes, that's okay. my opinion. Okay. Um, Tracy, Frank, Leisha. You guys have any interest in doing that? Yeah, I'm game because I mean I think I'm having this huge sense of deja vu where we keep having the same conversation over and over and don't get anywhere. I mean, you, I think you could play back the last three meetings and it would be they would overlay. Well, Frank, it goes back a lot farther than that. You know, just in within the committee. You know, but I, I think you know to try to hash out the sizes and, and take in consideration the ideas in the public meeting. And just for me to, to, to look at the area again and mark it off and really look at it. I think that'd be good. I, I'm, I'm for that. Okay. Yeah, I go. Okay. Well, then why don't we um, schedule that like maybe for next next week i'll send out an email with some some potential dates we can we can schedule a working session we can we can do that um and then you know we'll we will send you know send that around and and make a uh, hopefully have a decision at our next meeting on what we want to present to council because I mean, we, we can decide whatever we want, but but we have to present a plan to council, and then it, then it's up to them. Okay, but there, you know, there's obviously a strong contingent, not just one person that says let's not do anything at all, until until Bird Island settles down. I mean, if that's really, I, you know, I we, disagree with that. Well, we have to have a solid at this point. To me, if you know, a, a bridge. You know the ideas that the neighbors have presented and what we feel 
And if somebody dissents from that and feels like that's not acceptable, they have a vote, you know? Yep. Okay, well, I'm, I'm for going the next, you know, taking the walk and coming up with a new plan. Just, just so we're, we're clear too, is that, you know, I did hold two uh, workshops or charrettes. Uh, one was at 10 a.m. and one was in the uh, evening. Um, and the majority of the people that were attending those meetings, you know, most of them were the residents that were surrounding the area, but they were against the proposal. Uh, and more, I think, um, in harmony with, with, with what um, uh, Mr. Willard had come up with. Um, you know, still remember you saw Mr. Withers, uh, Anime Klotz, and um, Jim Willard that have signed up to speak on this matter? Yes. Yeah, all right, so if any more discussion from the committee, we will, we will um, hear from uh, Stephen and Jim and Anime. I'd, I'd like to speak also. Who is that? Um, it's Mr. the Teglers. Teglers. The Teglers, the other adjacent homeowner. Yeah. Yeah. We're in front and on the side of the park, both. We, we have an L-shaped prop right over here. The property. Yeah, we, right, we, we, know, we know where you are and who you are. I just, yeah, apparently, I, I don't think you had signed up before, so. Um. Is it okay that we speak? Sure, of course. Okay, we, we just, we Thank, just you. On Thank you. We'll go right. in order. Nora and Stephen Withers was the first one to um, sign up. So Stephen, you have three minutes unless the uh, committee would like to add more time to your uh, discussion. Well, three minutes. OK. okay. Uh, my opinion is that boardwalk is way too big. I think most of the neighbors I've talked to think that it's going to attract non-residents to the area as opposed to residents, like we have over on uh, Fifth Avenue. The other thing that someone made a comment that this would be uh, way too expensive to extend the existing boat dock. The reason I made that suggestion to Frank and to Jim was we go down there in the evening, we sit on that dock, there's one bench. And what I was trying to get, if you look at the sunset, the dock that's out there now is the one place you can see the sunset, not behind the trees. So that's where people all stand and congregate. And of course, with the virus, we're all separating. I do not believe this length of board, uh, boardwalk would be any more expensive than expanding that dock out 20 feet um, so that you could get at least three benches out there so people could enjoy the sunset. You usually got about three couples down there watching the sunset, and that's about it. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to use the benches looking through the trees at the uh, south. So I think you need to check your cost. I don't think the cost is uh, 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 any more than what you're proposing. And I agree with Jim Willard's plan. I would uh, especially agree with this parking concept to put the parking in um, <coughs> so it gives an organized system down there. Whether the, uh, the place where he's got the benches is three benches or four benches doesn't matter, but I think the best view is out on that boardwalk. And I think the boardwalk would be a lot less expensive than that long, uh, I mean, the expanding the existing dock would be a lot less expensive than extending that board dock over into the neighbor's area, excuse me. <coughs> That's it. I'm, all right, thank you. Who is next? Uh, Mr. Jim Miller is next. Yeah, thanks, Robert. Um, someone made the comment that uh, we really shouldn't be dealing with Bird Island because it's we don't have control over it. We, we, we do not have control over it, but whether we do or not, it is inextricably tied to what goes on at Fernwood Park. Uh, since Fernwood Park has historically been a, a jumping off point to get to the island for many people, <clears throat> including a lot of non-residents. And when there's an incident on the lakes, whether it's Bird Island or anywhere else, Fernwood Park is where all the emergency vehicles and rescue vehicles come and there needs to be places for them to park. And so we have many impacts that, that we're gonna have at Fernwood, whether we like it or not. And, and there is some logic to trying to figure out what's going to be the 
resolution of the Bird Island issues uh, before we complete a, a plan for the improvement of the park, <clears throat> which we're not trying to you know, eliminate, but, but I would like to point out a couple of things. The scaled down plan that I proposed and that Frank Krenz has elaborated on a little bit, you know, someone said 25 feet. I don't care if it's 25, 30, or 40. There is an area uh, you know, to the west of the existing boat ramp that does provide a very clear, un, uh, unconstrained view of the lake that would accommodate another two or three or four benches and provide more than enough uh, seating area. And, and, and it could be on the upland side of the cypress trees immediately outside the wetland. I say that because I guarantee you, if you stay out of the wetlands, you do not have a permitting issue. You simply don't. It's not gonna be an, an Orange County issue. It's not gonna be a sovereign land issue with the state or the water management district. It'll just be a town of Windermere issue. And it's something that's easily constructible. Um, the other elements of Frank's plan are, are certainly worth looking at, including the extension of the existing dock, which, you know, I, I can't dis, I, I can't disagree that that's where people want to sit when they do come down. When residents walk down to the lake, especially in the evenings when it's not busy, it's not crowded in the middle of the day, that's where they prefer to walk out and sit down. And right now there's a single small, it's probably six foot bench out there. And so 30 seconds. Additional seating would be helpful. I would like to see the committee hire a, a land planner that, and there are such people and they're experienced and they're professional and they know how to plan public spaces, especially adjacent to a lake and with an existing boat ramp. I would like to see that kind of professional expertise brought to this issue. And, and I would like to see then see a eventual cost benefit analysis about the cost of what we're gonna build versus who's gonna benefit from it. The only, the only consultant I've seen uh -huh. so far is the builder who wants to build the, the boardwalk. The biggest thing you can. Um, and if we do the walk through the park, Nora, I'd like the residents to be able to coordinate with you so that they can attend as well. It would have to be a public meeting anyway. Always a public meeting. Residents are always, always welcome. Um, okay, thank you. And we did have a professional designer do this. Uh, I, IDG did the design for all the parks. They're a professional company. We paid them a hefty amount of money for it. Um, okay, who's next? Uh, Ms. Anime Klontz. Hi. Um, I have a question to start out with. Um, I would like to know um, if all members of the Parks and Rec Committee were on the charades or the charrettes um, with the residents. No, they weren't. So I think that that was valuable information um, that we all shared. We all took our time. I was there for both meetings. Um, I believe my neighbors were, and it took, it took a lot of our valuable time. And there were some very compelling reasons um, as to why we oppose um, this boardwalk. Um, and I, re I really don't wanna go into them again, um, but I spent my time um, sharing those. Um, I, just to summarize, I believe anything that we build, they will come. Our, our, our town, our surrounding area have changed. Um, I think Bird Island is a huge issue. I don't think it's the only issue. Um, Lake Street uh, is not tied to Bird Island and there is, um, that's been shut down due to all the um, undesirable activity um, with you know, profanity, trash, drinking, um, you name it. Um, I have photographs of the, um, of the park where people have spread blankets. Um, so it is a destination upon itself. I'm also worried if Bird Island gets shut down, where's everyone going to go? Um, Fernwood Park is a little too close to Bird Island and if there's a platform out there, what's to stop them from pulling their boats up 
Um, we won't get a 50 foot perimeter because we're not a bird sanctuary. Um, I'm concerned about the wetlands. Um, I believe someone said that they've been sadly ne neglected. Um, those wetlands have been there for years. Um, and they were, it was beautiful back there, clear water, no one could get to it. And One then someone, someone went in and disrupted it. I have photographs from this spring and I have photographs from when I was back in Florida in August. And it, there's pond scum, it's polluted. Those need to be cleaned out and uh, native plants put back in. Um, so I will just say one more time, um, I am not in favor of adding any amenities that or are going to attract um, things we don't want. Uh, we're talking Very about serious. utopia and I wish it were so. And one more point I wanna make, I don't live on the lake. I have no lake access. It's, it's just that the downside isn't worth it um, to me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me, I, I will just say I was on, on both charrettes and I know, um, I know committee members tried to be on one or the other, but um, you know, committee members are all volunteers. We do contribute a great deal of time to the committee uh, and everybody can't always be at everything. So, I appreciate thanks. that. But when you're making decisions that directly affect my property value and my quality of life, um, I do think it's important. And if any committee member needs a copy of the recordings, we can uh, provide those to you. Okay. Any more public comment, Robert? Yes. Uh, yes. We had. Um, oh, sorry. The Teglers. Yes, a couple things I'd like to talk about. One of which is the cost. So the cost of extending the dock 20 feet to the west, the existing dock by 10 foot wide, which is the existing dock. Um, being in the dock business, I know what that would cost. Uh, an approximate cost about $35 per square foot, which is about $7,000. If you include railings, uh, additional benching and such, you're talking about, and permitting, somewhere between ten and $11,000. This project that we're talking about, building a 350 foot by six foot wide boardwalk with uh, 10 benches and then a 24 by 24 deck area with extensive benching around it. Um, just the decking alone is $93,000 and that's at a reasonable rate of, of $35 a square foot. It, it could be much larger, but that's an average rate. So that's $93. So the comparison of building this boardwalk and extending the deck um, is, not, is not even close. Um, so, you know, $95,000 cost to build a boardwalk with additions for railings, benches, trash cans, permits, uh, yearly lease, which I would estimate being in the business is somewhere around $5,000 a year to get the state to allow us to have uh, a larger than, um, than the permit uh, is, is, is allowed to have. So, the yearly lease would be an additional cost each year. Uh, another issue I have is location of the dock, the 24 by 24 dock. Uh, we had a meeting uh, with a couple of the members of the committee along with uh, one of the uh, town councilmen and I was assured that this dock was up on land and mm -hmm. I, was I was mistaken about the location of the dock. And um, I do have a plan in front of me of where it's located. And it's out in navigable water. And, you know, today I hear that the reason that's out there is because they want it in the lagoon for a better view. So um, I just want to make it clear that it is in navigable water. It is able to be pulled up to a boat. Uh, today it's in about three and a half feet of water. So um, that certainly needs to be clarified uh, and the location of this entire project needs to be clarified, not just a couple of flags put out there and for, for us to take the word that, um, it's not water. that it's not in the water and allowed to be 
uh, boated up to and, and, and so on. So that's, uh, that's basically what I need to say. Thank you. That's all we had, sign up, Nora. Okay. Um, all right, uh, where are we? Nora, did you have a, uh, how are you going to set up this meeting, this uh, on-site meet? Um, I was gonna send an email out to everybody and try to come up with some, some dates that would work for everyone. And then when we have that, um, and of course you included, when we have that, then we'll, um, let town admin know and we'll post it. Okay. So, uh, we'll need, I'm sorry, Bob. Yep. Uh, we'll need at least 40 hour, 48 hours notice. Um, and please don't do it this Saturday because there's a Trump boat parade. <laughs> <laughs> I already have plans for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, okay. Let, let, let me, let me uh, Nora, if I yes. may. Let me interject one thing. Uh, I said it before at a meeting where most of the residents around there had attended. And I'd like to reiterate it. The people on the Parks and Rec Committee worked very hard to keep all of our parks available and in tip-top shape for the residents of our town. That's their job. They're all volunteers. They don't need to be derided for the work that they've done. All of the money would be coming from money that they have raised. It's not coming from the town coffer. So when we talk about cost, the cost is money that has been raised through events that have been put on by the Parks and Rec Committee. And every one of these people, of all the committees that I've ever been associated with, every one of these members work really, really hard for this town. And I'd just like for everybody to know that uh, we can second guess things that they've been working on for three or four years, that's fine. But their heart is in the right place and they work hard at what they do to keep all of our parks in the best condition possible. And if you haven't been over to Central Park, I suggest you go over there because that park is well used by the residents of this town. And that's what we're doing is we're trying to set up for residents of this town. We can't control what comes in from outside. I wish we could, but they are public parks. So therefore what we benefit, what we as residents benefit from this, these actions, so does anybody else that wants to come in. And yes, Lake Street Park was shut down because once it was found out about during the uh, time where everything was shut down, we had bus loads coming in and jumping off at that park and it was just too crowded. It was a health hazard, so it was shut down. Uh, the committee, though, their job is to enhance the parks for the benefit of the residents of the town of Windermere. I, for one, really appreciate all their hard work and effort. And I think all of the residents of the town really owe them a thanks for the work that they do. Whether you agree with it or not, we're always welcome to come to the meetings and have your input. And uh, if there's an opening on the committee, please join. But until this came up, I don't recall seeing a lot of people at these meetings. So that's my two cents worth. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Thank you Bob. Okay, we need to approve the September meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? A motion to approve the September meeting minutes. A second. Thank you. Um, voting, Doug? Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Okay. Um, just, no, real quick. Just for those yep. that are on the line still uh, about the boardwalk issue, um, we will advertise the meeting. Um, at least 48 hours in advance, if not more, once we have a date and a time set up. Um, you know, so just check with the town of Windermere. You can check our Facebook, Instagram website, or our town app, or you can just go ahead and continuously email me, text me, bug me, because I think you all have my uh, cell phone number or my email. 
Uh, so just, you know, keep checking with me and I'll let you know when that date and time is. And, and I will also send out the regular email that I do when we're having discussions about Fernwood Park, just like I promised all of you I would. So you should have gotten a notification for this meeting uh, in an email that I sent out yesterday. If you did not, please let me know. Bob, do you have a, a liaison report? Nope, not right now. We're probably <laughs> after Tuesday's meeting, but uh, nothing right now. Okay. Uh, Robert, Scott, anything from you guys? I'm good. Oh, wow. Scott, one thing that, that came in today, um, committee members, that I, I didn't get a chance to add on the agenda, was an email from a lady who has been trying to use Central Park and her five-year-old son is in a wheelchair um, and it, he can't access the playground areas. So she asked if we could do a, a cutout the way we have on the exercise equipment so that his wheelchair could roll into the playground areas. Um, I sent an email to Scott asking him if, if we could do that. Do you guys have any objections to doing that? Of course not. Okay. Um, and then the other thing she asked about was a swing, you know, and I know we've, we've looked at um, handicap swings before in there and there was a reason we didn't do it, which I, I, I can't remember. I asked Scott to take another look at it because she sent pictures. I mean, this little boy is so cute and he needs to be able to swing. Yeah, so, Nora, I think we talked about putting some, um, some elements over there at Palmer Park. Uh, but yeah. we could, we could, but I'll look into um, Central Park because that's a great location. We may just have to change out that existing uh, swing set. We tried to find some retro frit fits that would go in there and nothing, uh, nothing matched up. But, you know, what's a couple poles and a couple more swings added to that? So I'll look into it. We may have to reach out to some ADA people to make sure we get the right specs, but we can do that. Yeah, that was, they have one of those over at, uh, uh, over by the other boat ramp, uh, outside of town, Means Point. Yeah. The, Handicap uh, swing sets there. Yeah, and I'll contact uh, Playgrounds Without Bounds. Uh, it's a charitable organization. I do believe that they help fund uh, retrofitting existing uh, playgrounds for uh, handicapped children or disabled children. And then uh, if not, we have several charitable organizations within the town that we may be able to tap into to help get money for those improvements. Uh, okay, I mean, we, we, yeah, we just need to find out what the, what the cost would be on it. So Scott, can you go ahead and have, can Public Works go ahead and put the, pull a piece out of the, the playground areas like we have on the exercise equipment so he can get in there? We, we let me look into the proper ADA approach. We may have to construct something to the walkway to fulfill that. So just give me a little time and let me reach out to some uh, professionals on that. Okay, and I'll, I'll send this uh, lady an email and tell her we're, we're, we are working on it and we are committed to making that happen for her. Yeah, we'll definitely get there. Okay. Um, oh, and the last thing, Robert, I wanted to ask you, we are going to have a lot of shirts and medals left over from the race. A lot of people didn't show up to pick up their race packs. Um, so I was thought maybe I would check with the chief and see if he knows any, you know, charitable organizations that might like a bunch of very nice medals. Um, and some t-shirts, but if you have any ideas of anyone that might like those, let me know. Yeah, we can, we can check with the Edgewood uh, Children's Ranch and yeah. some other organizations and maybe just allow them a free sign up and then uh, allow them to do the race. Um, you know, we, we could talk about it, figure out a way to, to get rid of them. Just let us know what the number is and then I'll talk to him tomorrow. Okay. Well, we'll have, we will we won't have a final count on them until the sixteenth. That's that's fine. There's no rush. Okay. Well, that probably. Nora, Nora, yeah. Nora, 
real quick, um, do you think you should put on that last email that, you know, if you don't pick it up by, and I don't know if you've already done this, but if you don't pick it up by a certain date, because you really, we don't want people coming back and saying, well, I want my money back because I didn't get my medal on my t-shirt, but I don't know if you've already handled that. Yeah, we're, we're going to send one final email out telling them that the last day for pickups is the 15th. And when people sign up for the race, they, they sign a, a waiver agreeing that there's no refunds anyway. So we don't, I, I gave people some refunds um, just because, you know, we got people, they had to move to Pittsburgh, they were out of work, uh, you know, it's a different, different circumstance. Um, so I, I gave out refunds to people who requested them, but we, we don't have to. So, you know. If, okay. Okay. Sorry. I was just checking. Nora, one additional thing. Uh, I just heard back from Jennifer Roper and she would be glad to do the photography uh, for $200. Sounds like a plan. Awesome. All right. All righty. And you gave her the time, Bob? Yeah, well, I told her uh, 9 to 12. Is that about right? Not, uh, I think we, uh, Robert, correct me, it's a two hour route. Yeah, it's a, it's a two hour round. It's pretty quick. Um, so she can either have somebody drive her or we can have her ride in the back of one of the trucks. Okay. So okay. probably 930, 945, Bob. Okay. Well, I'll coordinate with her. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Nora, the only thing I really had, and I'm not sure if it's a HPB thing or if it's a PNR thing, uh, the boathouse leases are coming due. Man, somebody's very popular tonight. Um, the boathouse uh, leases are due. If you're not familiar with the boathouses, they were uh, intended to be 10-year leases and became 20-year leases. Um, I know, um, you know the last time this came up, the council wanted to go ahead and explore what they wanted to do with those leases, whether they wanted to renew them, where they want to do a uh, uh, sealed bid process to release the, the boathouses or just to release them uh, or to make them historical structures or to demo them. Um, that's something the town council is going to have to decide probably in uh, November or maybe December. Um, but we would probably like historical preservation boards um, input as well as uh, again parks and recreation because it is located next to Palmer Park. So. I'm not sure who actually, um, you know, has kind of jurisdiction over it, uh, but any insight of what you feel should be done with that area would be uh, much welcome. Okay. And Nora, I, uh, yes. I, would, I would like my list included in the minutes, so I'll forward that to Doug. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, all right. Anything else, anybody? Nope. All right, I'll shoot an email out and we'll figure out a uh, time for our Fernwood Park workshop. And um, tonight. thank you so much, everyone. Okay. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Have a good thank night. Bye. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then anybody that anime, um,